Today in Essential Investing, we have not one, not two, but three macro experts and how they have positioned themselves to survive recession. Our three experts have three completely different strategies. Who do you think is right? First up, YouTube sensation George Gammon, followed by Mr. Dollar Milkshake Theory himself, Brent Johnson, and finally, the lovely Daniela DiMartino Booth. I'm probably, I'm probably going to throw you a curveball here, but I, I would say uh, three-month treasuries or six-month treasuries, T-bills. You like so this? why am I saying? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because long-term, you are absolutely right. I think that we have gone into a commodity super cycle, and usually those commodity super cycles last 10, 15 years. But commodities have really run. And some of my favorites, like coal as an example, have really, really gone parabolic. So, you know, long term, I'd love to increase my position in coal, copper, uranium, et cetera, but not necessarily at these prices. So I, I want to keep dry powder on the sideline to take advantage of what I think will most likely be price declines as a result of what we've been talking about and what the yield curve is predicting. Now, you know, I could hold that money in a checking account or whatever, or a savings account, pretty much get 0% interest and then yeah. your counterpart at the bank. But I prefer to put that into like a six month treasury and uh, get a 4.5% uh, annualized yield. Now, the, the pushback is going to be, well, George, you're still not keeping up with the rate of inflation. I get it. Ab absolutely true. Absolutely true. But I think what could happen if, if my base case uh, you know, is, is, is comes to fruition in, in 2023 is that the, the Fed will have to, quote unquote, pivot, right? And in my uh, I think the Fed will most likely go back down to 0%. I, mean, I say that with a little bit of hesitation, but I, I think that's the most probable outcome. So if the Fed goes da back down to 0%, you have to ask yourself why. What, what would the market look like to prompt them to make that move? And in that environment, commodity prices are coming down. Yeah, paper, right? certainly. Yeah. So pa paper, gold, so and silver will also be very low again. What's that? Gold? Pa paper, gold, and silver will drop uh, quite extensively if, if that occurs. Ab absolutely, and, and Bitcoin might as well. Uh, so, uh, but that's an opportunity. So, yeah. what I'm saying here, and what I'm doing, and this is an investment advice, but just my own portfolio, I've I've bought a lot of these T bills with the idea that uh, I, there's nothing I want to buy right now, even real estate, because the prices are too high. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and park my dry powder and T-bills because when the prices come back down to a level where I think they're quote unquote cheap and where I want to actually start buying them again, that's an environment where I think the Fed drops rates to zero. And if the Fed drops rates to zero, I'm going to have a capital gain on, your on, on those six month T-bills. So you go ahead and, and, and realize the capital gain on the T-bill, sell it to get the dry powder back, the cash to go ahead and buy the commodity prices or real estate that has now become a heck of a lot cheaper as a result of whatever the inversion of the three month and the 10 years predicting. So that's that's what I'm doing in my own personal portfolio. I like Turkey and Dubai, I think long term, especially with the BRICS coming together and uh, the, the, the world coming to the realization that commodities are far more important than green pieces of paper, that a lot of the, the power will be going toward those BRIC nations, whether that's good or bad, I'm not, I'm not here to say. But in that world, I think Dubai becomes the, the London and property prices really scream. I think Turkey plays a big role there as well. I think you could get some good bargains with the hyperinflation. I'm positioned very defensively between now and probably the end of Q1. Um, I don't want to be anywhere near the emerging markets. I think the emerging markets are in a lot of trouble. Um, I, I, think, I think those who are, yeah, I, I think those who are allocating away from the U.S. into emerging markets are are not doing the right thing. I think they're going to end up getting hurt. Um, and I think uh, you know, my guess is that at some point. In in um, in in 2023, I will be very bullish U.S. equities. I don't know, you know. I, th I think we're going to have to make a low before I say that. But uh, my guess is that we will get to a point where I will say that's the time to load up on U.S. equities. But I wish I had a lot more specific ideas for you right now. But to be honest, like I said, I'm, in, until we have this market event, I'm really just kind of being careful. You know, I think, uh, and I, and I, 
I think I think many opportunities are going to present itself in 2013 or sorry, in 2023. Yeah. And yeah. so this is what I would say, even though we're in a uh, if, if I could leave the audience with, with a thought, it would be that even though we're in an inflationary environment and if you just sit in cash, you probably lose purchasing power. There is nothing wrong with having cash in your portfolio. It will give you a couple things It will give you peace of mind. And it will let you sleep at night. And, the, and, and those two things are underrated because if you're stressed, you're not going to make good decisions. Right. So if you so if, if having cash allows you to think more clearly then that right there is giving you a leg up in the game. And if there's some kind of a dislocation in the markets, if you don't have any cash to go put to work, then it doesn't really do you any good. But if you have cash on the sidelines and, and, and some asset that you really want to own that you, or that has the potential to do really well, gets repriced 20% lower, 30% lower, and you have the opportunity to go in there and buy it because you have cash on the sidelines when everybody else is a forced seller, you might make enough money over a one week or a one month period to make up for any losses of the inflation 100%. you had for sitting in cash for six months. So I would recommend that people have cash in their portfolio right now. So I have to say, um, just color me stupid because I cannot figure out the VIX. That being said, I think rates volatility, uh, especially in the aftermath of this magnificent rally that we've seen in treasuries. I mean, everybody was talking, oh, the Nasdaq was up seven and a half percent. You know, the, the world as we know it, this is the dawn of a new age. And I'm like, did you see the rally in treasuries? Hmm. So we haven't had a flight to quality in a very long time. You've had bonds and stocks fall out of bed synchronously. So there is something to be said for, are we finally to the point where there's a recognition in the sovereign bond market that it's going to be so bad that you actually have to go back to the old playbook of that flight to quality at the long end of the treasury curve? So if we're there, you know, God help us. Um, and we've only had a recession. We have not had a financial crisis. Not yet. It doesn't matter if you have de deflation. If you do have a financial crisis, and I think the two of us are sitting here talking about debt being incorrectly priced. So if we do have a financial crisis of any kind, for heaven's sake, gold will shine. Yeah. Your precious metals will shine. Finally, yeah. Yeah. they will come out of, 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 of a deep hibernation. And, 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 and again, that's even if we have deflation. Yeah. People seem to associate you can only have precious metals shine if there's an inflationary no. backdrop. That's not true. If there's no place else to hide, your precious metals can shine. If you love that video, check out this one where internet sensation George Gammon reveals why trying to front run the Fed pivot like Ralph Powell and others are suggesting is financial suicide.